Hello again. I have notes. First, I just want to say there's so much appreciation and love here for you. Um, I tell people about being here, and I call it getting loved on. So thanks for loving on us. This may just be semantics, but it would help in my home life. I really enjoy the art or the action or the culmination of making money, of doing deals, of completing business transactions. And I really enjoy the life that we're leading and increasing as far as what the money brings us. I know all these different things I want to do, including the, I'm investigating the type of motor homes we're going to get and all the places we're going in our homeschooling trips. And, and I'm looking through, you know, someday the yachts I want to charter. I don't want to own one. It's too much trouble. But the, all the places I want to go... But I don't specifically focus on this as the reason for the money, like this particular one thing. I get a charge out of the flow, the, the flow of thriving of money. And, but I receive a lot of input about you know, the love of money, the root of all evil, and, and that it, you shouldn't want the money. You should want the thing that the money's buying you, and then the money will come. And, but that's not where my juices are flowing from. Well, there's something inherently screwy about calling anything the root of evil. I agree with that. Yes. And <laughs> you pretty much have to get over feeling bad about money if you're ever going to allow it to flow in a really strong way. Right. That's but fair. let's consider why anyone would say money is the root of evil. What is behind that thinking? And what we notice is that it's shortage thinking. It's mm -hmm. the belief that there is a finite pile of money and that if that guy gets too much in his pile, that he'll be depriving others. That is fundamentally what is at the heart of people's belief that money is evil. Then there is this other thing that sometimes happens where sometimes people will get so focused upon something that law of attraction opens very strong avenues about that. And people can often get very single-minded about things, especially things that begin working for them in a powerful way. In other words, let's say that you are someone who's focusing on making money and it's been important to you. And by the way, it started, let's say, because of your love of your family and your desire for them to live a lovely life. Mm -hmm. And that was so active within you, which caused the question to culminate within you so powerfully that you focused a lot on attracting avenues for money to flow. Mm -hmm. And in doing so, and in your open, good-feeling, positive attitude, you allowed money to begin flowing. And then, as all things, there began to get a momentum going. And so, the more you focused, the more it came, and the more it came, the more you focused, and the more you focused, the more it came, and the more it came, the more you focused. Now, it's possible that you could focus upon your love of family and your love of golf and your love of writing and your love of teaching and your appreciation of, and you could use the word appreciation or love interchangeably mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. your appreciation of your family, of golf, of money. You could focus upon all of these things and law of attraction would be tending to all of them simultaneously, tending to all of them evenly. So you could have this wonderful unfolding experience. Or you could be so single-mindedly focused upon dollars that law of attraction is predominantly giving you evidence about that and then other things in your life could begin to feel neglected mm -hmm. and those neglected people are the ones that coin the phrase mm -hmm. greed or yeah. workaholic mm -hmm. because they feel deprived of something they want and they feel jealous of the thing that has the attention that they want that's where that philosophy gets started. Now, we don't necessarily mean that that's the vibration that is in the heart of the one who's speaking it to you because a lot of people just pick up things. Yeah. We would make peace with outrageous abundance. Absolutely. Because there is a vortex that is as wide as you can allow it to be. And there is something to be said, and we have in fact said, that you are more likely to have a pure vibration and attract more abundance if you leave money out of the equation. But it's not because money is evil. It's because most of you have very resistant vibration around the subject of money because mm. you've heard things like money is the root of all evil.
But it isn't because it is the root of all evil that we want you to leave money out of the equation. It's because it messes up your vibration, usually. Right. So we think that most people are healthier in just desiring something and asking the universe to bring it. And the universe can bring it in whatever way the universe wants to bring it. But usually the path of least resistance is through the avenue of money because economy is so well understood by most of you, you see. Right. There's no right or wrong in that. As I asked the question, I realized it was... I just get it, me getting over anyone else's response to my love. Of now that the abundance, was what so. we were about to say to you. So you are receiving directly. <laughs> In other words, that's the most important thing. You can't be bothered by anyone else's hangups about anything that you are doing. Right. You just got to love them anyway. Right. Well, thank you. And I just want to say that um, it's going to leading edge to places I haven't been before. Uh, our sons listen to your tapes every night. And every time we're out of connection, they make sure we know it. It's pretty interesting, pretty interesting lifestyle we're leading there. So um, sometimes I'm less grateful in the moment than others, but for the most part, there's much love and appreciation. Thank you so much. Thank you.